I'm Ann Cornick from Paint and Porcelain, and uh, I'm here to teach beginners how to get started in China painting and also encourage those of you that have been painting a while to join us and paint along. Um, we're going to be working on eggs and ornaments, and we're going to be using this. It's an egg lathe. So like I said, we're going to be working on our egg lathe. Now they're called Deluxe Craft Lathes, L-A-T-H-E. And, um, and you can get them on Amazon for about 30 bucks. I, I suppose that Joann's and Michael's would have them too. But, you know, these days, who wants to go running around trying to find things? Uh, if you can order it on Amazon and have it delivered, and I checked and they do have them out there. They also have these two cute little washers on the lathe. They have one that's small and one that's larger. And these uh, little washers um, easily can attach, especially to ornaments. And you're walking through the house and one of them drops off. So you can buy a replacement set. It comes not only with the washers, but also comes with a disc so that you can do cups. And it comes with a, a tool that helps you loosen the little, um, um, this the little if you can see that it's it's um like a little turning thing here that um tightens and loosens one side of the lathe and it, i find that it's really difficult to uh, turn that most of the time and so i always keep a a, a pair of pliers needle nose are best because they'll fit in that little space so i can turn things and uh loosen it and, and uh get my my project out. That's that's one thing to keep in mind. The other thing is those little rings that I just showed you. Um, some people recommend gluing them in. I don't. Um, I just find that there are times when I want to switch where they are or something and I, I feel like if I glue them in, I'm really stuck. I'm going to angle you down so you can see what I'm doing. So a couple of things, first of all. This is what it looks like, obviously. It's called an egg lathe. And we talked about the rubber um, little rings that are in it. I put, because I'm right-handed now, so if you're left-handed, um, you can do a lot of these things and just flip it over this way and work on it. But I'm right-handed, so what I'm telling you is set up for a right-handed person. And the first thing you want to do is this left side, because I'm right-handed, so I'm painting with my right hand, I'm gonna pull this left side all the way out, like this. And the reason for that is because I'm gonna be turning this as I paint, and I'm gonna be painting with my right hand. So if you're left-handed, obviously you do the reverse. You turn this around this way, and you're gonna be turning this with your right hand and painting with your left, okay. So that's the first most important thing. And I have not used this a lot. As you can see, it, it's plastic, and so it doesn't always move very smoothly. So one thing I would suggest is if it really gets stuck, you can use Vaseline on it in here to oil it a little bit. But um, I, I think you just have to be patient. Also, there are these little... Um, incremental sort of quarterly marks on both of these ends. And I would suggest that you take something like a permanent marker, like a Sharpie, and you just mark them so you can really see them because they're hard to see. And um, if you're using this, you can use it with wooden eggs, you can use it with uh, regular eggs, you can do pisanki with it, you can do a number of different things with it. So, um, you know, you need to really decide um, if you need those marked, but if you do, it'll help you determine where the middle and the quarter of each egg is. Okay, so I've got this pulled out, and the next thing I'm going to do is show you what I normally do with this. Now here's an example. This is an egg that I did earlier today, or earlier this week, and I did a band around it. I really like a band around it, and then I also did all these little itty bitty dots. This is a um, forget-me-not, on there and I just think it turned out it almost looks like ribbon was wrapped around it and I, I really like the look of that so the first thing I do with a bisque egg and you can't see it I'm sure but 
right along here, there's a line, I made it a little darker, where the egg was actually sealed, you know, where the when they poured it, that's the middle line. And so if you're going to do this banding like this, you put it into the egg mold or the egg lathe and you put the flat side towards the smaller hole like this. And you're going to put this side, the rounded side, see how it, it rounds up? You're going to put that towards this bigger hole because when you pull this up to it, the bigger hole will hold it better for you. So you pull it up like that so it's even. And then you put your finger here and you push even further because there's a spring in there. Hold it and tighten it. Okay? I like to use metal ferrule um, brushes because they, they tend to hold their form a little better. You don't have to. You can use anything you'd like. Um, I'm going to be using um, some odd colors, but I want them to be bright enough that you can see what I'm doing. You basically, now you know with bisque, you need a little more oil than you do with um, a glazed egg. So I'm going to put um, a green band on this. And you can hold your hand here. Now I paint backhanded. <laughs> So you can hold your hand here and do this, or if you feel you'd have better luck, you can bring over a couple of books. Put them so they're about the same height as this, and then you can just turn it and paint this way. Okay, so you could take them and you could put your brush on and just paint this way. Now you see, it doesn't, the paint does not go on smoothly. You need more oil. And that's going to be one of the issues you're going to find with, with using a bisque egg. But you can do this. Get the, get the paint on there. And then you could, you're going to just turn this. And follow your line. And I can see my line. I know you guys can't. Now with bisque, you always have to put more um, on than you think you do when it comes to. Now, it, don't worry if you get over the edges on this. Because the, the key to doing the banding for me has been doing a good cleanup on it. And if you do a good cleanup, I think you will find that it works even better for you. The cleanup makes the band look real smooth. So this is what I'm doing, going around, taking my green. You have to add a lot of oil, but not too much. If it starts running, you're in big trouble. So make sure you pat it off a little bit. And then I go in and I, after I've gone around once and I just add the color and keep going and try to smooth it and you see having this action along with your brush action really does smooth it now it's not as easy as doing um, a, a wooden egg and it's not as easy as doing a regular egg and that's part of the problem with china painting is that our paints are a little particular and so are the things that we paint on. They're slippery and they're not as easy, but there. Okay, so it's not perfect, but you get the idea. You go all the way around, smooth out as best you can. And then to clean up, clean your brush really, really well. I'm going to take this off now because I'm going to change where I am a little bit. Clean your brush really well. Put your hand over here on the side, right here. I know I'm going to be a little bit in the way, so I'll try not to. I'll try to turn a little bit there. Put your brush down where you want it. And just clean it up. Wipe off your brush. Clean your brush again. Make sure you pat all of the, uh, if you're using uh, turpentine or if you're using mineral spirits, make sure you pat it all off. 
and put it back down on there and keep going. It'll give you a real nice edge. And then you can do it on this side too. Same thing. Oops, I'll put my hand here. You're going to put your brush down. Go around, clean your brush, get all that turpentine off. And just keep going around until it's nice and even. So see, I have my band now. Now the next thing you can do if you want, but you don't have to, but like I did on this, is that you can do this. And you could do this also with um, enamel if you're really good with enamel. Um, but what I would normally do is... I would take this off and I would fire it. Um, so you smooth this all, and then you can take a liner or, um, uh, let's see, a fine liner. Uh, let's get one here. Okay, well here's, a, here's my number one brush. It's gonna be a little heavy, but you can dip it in the same color or a different color, and you can go around and gently add a dot here, 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 and then do the same thing on the other side, a dot there. Oops, need a little more paint. Need a little more oil, I guess. That's part of the secret with painting on bisque. There. So can you see my dots there? You can space them very ev evenly. And, and it makes it work so much easier for you. I would do no more than that, you know, whatever you're gonna do on your band and then take it off. Now, this is the hard part. I'm gonna switch it back to this way that I was originally using it with the little knob on my right. Now, this is where having these, these uh, needle nose pliers comes in handy. I'm tilting it so you can see. I'm going to hold the egg Here's the egg. I'm going to hold it by the top and the bottom like that. So I'm not getting in the middle because my hole that I would normally put it on one of these with is right here and I can't get to it right now. So I'm going to turn this, hold the top and the bottom and I'm going to loosen it with my needle nose pliers until I know it's loose enough that I can do it by hand. And then I'm just gonna slide it back and take this off. See how I'm holding it? I'm not getting in anything. And you need one of these if you have it. You can slide it right on, ta-da, you don't get into it, okay? So that's what I use this for, and I really like the way it turns out. And as you can see, uh, it just makes it look so pretty. Um, another person that I know now, I didn't do this. This was done by somebody else, but they did it in an egg lathe. And with this one, you put it in this way, and then you can work on the little enamel flowers. And this is kind of the type of thing that my uh, my granddaughter uh, was doing. Now, here's the, the china egg. Here's something else you can do with it. This is a glazed egg. And that's why I'm, I'm using this to show you. Um, I'm going to put the glazed egg in. I'm going to put the small side in where I have the small circle. Move these out of the way. And I'm going to put the big side up to it. And I'm going to try to feel where the hole is underneath. And I think I've got it about in the middle. So I'm going to then, so I did this. Now I'm going to Hold this tight and hold it and screw it down so it's tight. Now, you see these little marks on here, here and here? I want to make sure that they're right in the middle. 
so you can turn it over and look. And yep, it's right in the middle. Okay, so I'm right in the middle. If you want to make a, um, an oval, make sure you darken these lines, line them up so they're across from each other. And then you're going to take, and on this you can use a Sharpie, It won't because Sharpies will, will burn off. Now, my hand is not the steadiest on this. And I'm going to bring over my books to work on. Makes it easier. You can get like a permanent little um, stand or make yourself even one. But I the books work fine. I don't use this that often. And I'm going to go from this mark over here on this side over to here. And I'm going to make a, let me see if I can turn a little more. I'm going to start here. And I'm going to make a smile. Okay. Good. Flip it around. Same thing. I'm going to make a smile from here to here. And I'm going to come about halfway between these two marks because I know this is the center and this is the side because these marks are every quarter. So I'm going to go from there. To there. Okay. Now, obviously, I don't have the steadiest hand. But you get an oval. And the oval, you can paint inside of. You can then put a decorative edge around it if you want. And fire it. And then come back and you can paint the egg a color if you want. Or you can put the oval on. You have, if you painted the luster on, then you'd have um, the center and you could paint that the next time. Okay, so now I'm going to take this off, oh, oh, go back over here. And again, this is where I'm going to take it off with. Now, I can try loosening it by hand. It's so hard that I really do need this to loosen it. And like I said, it has to be needle nose pliers. They have to be able to fit in there. Oh, not yet. Once you get it loose, but you need to tighten it really well because when you're using it, then with this, you can turn it. And stick this in it. And pull this back. And if you've done any painting on there, pull it back a little more your painting won't get messed up, okay? So you have the circle on here. Um, you can flip it over and try painting it, but um, I, I would paint the center, I guess, and then try to paint around the edges so I knew what I wanted to do. And I think I might even do something around the oval just so that I knew it was there, but that's how you get an oval on these. Now, you know, if you're doing a wooden egg, you could just paint you paint in the oval and it's all done and it's real simple. So um, the they don't work the best for china painting, but it, at least it gets you started so you, you have a, a nice oval to work from. Okay. Now you can use Vaseline, like I said, to put on here if you need to oil this a little bit. And, um, you know, That'll, that'll work pretty well. The other thing I use it for is ornaments. Okay, and you can use it for a round ornament. This is one that I have. And with the round ornament, you might have to do the reverse. Put, the, put this end against the small end. Then pull it up. Pull this in. And tighten it. And then you can paint on your round ornament. You can put your hand here and paint. You can put your books in front and paint, however you want to do it. With this one, it has a center in it, so it makes it much easier if I'm going to go in there and paint. I can just paint the center. I could do multiple colors, and I don't have to worry about it. It's very easy to get at. And then you just have to loosen this to take it off. 
And you might have to do it in two parts. You might have to paint the inside and then take it off and fire it and then paint the outside. And you can hold it obviously by the top, so that makes it pretty easy. But the ornaments that I think are the best to do on this are these. They drive me crazy. Do they drive you crazy? Do you have any like this or like this? I just think these are the hardest things in the world to paint. And so what I like about this is you can put this part right in there and come up on this part. And again, we're going to hold it, pull this all the way over and tighten it. And watch this. This is the best thing. The hardest thing for me is to get these little bands, this band and this band. Let me bring it up so you can see. This band here and this band here drive me crazy when I'm painting this ornament. But you can do it so easily. You need to get yourself a brush that's a little bit smaller than the area you're going to be painting. So I've got this rounded tipped brush that I'm going to use here. And you see it's smaller than the area I'm painting. And the reason for that is it's just easier to control, especially on bisque. So I'm going to do a red. Okay, and I'm just going to put it here. I guess I do need my books. It's easier with the books, <laughs> especially when you're doing this. And I'm just going to put the books down, put my hand on it to steady it. And go around. Oops, too oily. Get that oil off there. And you, you have to keep smoothing as you go. This is China paint. China paint is going to go on unevenly because of the nature of it. It's kind of translucent. So there'll be parts that are heavier than others. And then you're going to have to keep loading your brush after you get the first coat on. And don't worry about if you go out of the lines. See, I went out of the lines. Here, let me show you. Right here, I went out of the line a little bit right there. I'm going to smooth that and get rid of it, so don't worry about that. Just get your color on the way you want it as smoothly as possible. Then take your brush, clean it off really, really well. And now you can rest up here and get rid of the books. And I'll angle this so you can see. I'm going to rest up here, and I'm going to put my brush down. And I'm just going to turn it. And it will get rid of any marks. See, there's a mark right there. I'm going to put my brush down. And you may have to go over it a couple of times because this is red. See, I still have a little bit showing there. So I'm going to go over it one more time. Or you can use um, a different brush if you find that that works. Sometimes the bigger brushes will work a little better for you. And you can just switch to a bigger brush and do it. Yeah, that seems to work a little better. And you just go around, clean it up. And let's do green down here. Oops, need my book again. Going to bring my books back. Uh, this is going to be a little, little harder for you to see, so I'm going to tilt it. And you're just going to paint. And you will need oil as you go if you're using bisque. If you're not using bisque, I don't think you're going to have that same kind of problem. You 
get the idea. Smooth it out. Then I go back and get a bigger brush for this because the little brush just doesn't work down here. And I'm going to clean it up. And I'm going to stay on this because of the angle that I have here and just clean it up. And I can clean it up on the other side too. I have a surprise for you guys. I know Easter is coming and I know how important it is for you to get Easter eggs going. And beginners a lot of times have never worked on Easter eggs before. So as a special treat, I prepared this. It's a freebie line drawing that you can get at paintandporcelain.com. I'm gonna put the link up there right now. Uh, here we go. And if you go to studies, because I have it under studies, you'll have, um, you can get this sheet. It's all handwritten out, but I figured it was better than not having it done. And it has um, a picture of what you can paint on your egg and you can either sketch from this, just to give you ideas, or if you want to trace it, cut it out, and then go around the edge and cut little, here, let me, like this. You're going to cut little, cut in like this, 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 all the way around so that it'll fit on your egg. And you can put a little bit of your transfer paper underneath, and um, you can transfer it right to your egg if you want. This is done for um, the small eggs. And I think that these eggs are, um, I think they're like two and a half by one and a half. So, and they're like one and a half up here. They're like two down here. So um, if you want to do that, you can. Um, but it also has suggested colors so that as you're painting, you know what to paint the petals, you know what to paint the uh, the, the uh, leaves, and that kind of thing. And then if you get an, one of these egg, um, lay, um, you know, the egg lathe, you can use it, and you can start out by putting your band on first. Do the banding first if you're going to do it this way. Um, once you get your band on the way you want it, and the next time you'll be painting your flowers on. And we have um, flowers that you've already been exposed to in class here. I have a rose, which is probably the hardest thing on here. Then there's violets, forget-me-nots, and a wild rose. And I can show you what my wild rose turned out like. This is the wild rose so far. And um, this is what my forget-me-nots turned out like so far. And I, they're just really pretty, I think. I hope you enjoyed today. You know, just get your palettes out and get painting. All right, bye-bye. I hope you enjoyed the program, and I hope you'll take a minute to subscribe so that other people can learn more about China painting and we can get the word out to more people. Uh, you also can look at the links below. Uh, my paintandporcelain.com website has a lot of freebies and printables for uh, new and experienced painters as well as studies, supplies, and even some of my hand-painted china. So thank you again, and I'll see you next time.